Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is December 9th, 2015, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, is there any doubt left that Obama wants to completely destroy the right to bear arms? Reactionary gun control following the San Bernardino massacre leads to proposals for adding terror watch list suspects, handpicked by the federal government, to the no-buy gun list. Yeah, you like that, don't you, Bernie? Meanwhile... The draconian police state continues to restrict innocent Americans from traveling by plane. This time, even going as far as adding children to the no-fly list. Plus, info warriors across the country unite against Obama's attack plan on the Second Amendment. I'm on the internet all the time. I've never seen anything like that. Have you? All that plus much more up next Info on the InfoWars Nightly News. InfoWars! Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139 Really? Why can't why can't she respond, Senator? Uh, was... Dr. Curry, you're what you're you, Im to... you impugned her integrity. I uh, think she's entitled. Uh, you, you are I, welcome to respond, Doctor. I was basically called a denier that I'm denying science. Did you read my written testimony? Are you aware that the IPCC and the consensus has no explanation for the increase of ice in the Antarctic? Are you aware that they had no explanation for the fact that the rate of sea level rise from 19 20 to 1950 was as large, if not larger, as it currently is. Are you aware that temperatures have been warming for more than 200 years and that in the 20th century, 40% of the warming occurred before 1950 when carbon dioxide was not a factor in the warming? Well, that's a very interesting exchange. Uh, what are your thoughts about that, Lee? <laughs> Well, I mean, obviously that was just very colorful. It's a five minute clip actually, and you should watch it in its entirety. It's pretty funny, but basically you're seeing uh, an exchange between climatologist Judith Curry and uh, Massachusetts Senator Ed Markey. And they're basically fighting over what she, a climatologist, a scientist, he's basically saying, well, you're just saying it's God is doing everything. And she's like, I'm a scientist. And so this is, this is basically what we're now seeing in the global politics as they're having this UN climate meeting is that they're saying the science is settled and scientists are really trying to get out there and say, no, it's not. And of course, so she brings up some pretty interesting points. Um, and she was really upset about the fact that people are trying to discredit her views mm -hmm. um, because she's a scientist. She's a climatologist. This is what she's based her life's work on. Um, and basically, they're trying to impugn her integrity there. And so this was a conservative author and columnist, Mark Stein. They're part of this hearing on climate science. It was called by Republican Senator Ted Cruz. And it features prominent scientists who are skeptical of the claims that humans are causing uh, this global warming. And so she is basically taking all of her facts, all of her data from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which is the very panel that the UN is using to justify the fact that humans are creating climate change. So she's saying, I'm taking their data and saying that they cannot explain the hiatus in global warming. And they just silence her and ignore her and say, there is no hiatus. And so, you know. Well, this is what we always see, Leanne, just like you were saying, they say that the debate is settled, the, the science has been proven. 
But and I run into the argument a lot of times when I talk about things like this. They say, well, if people don't agree with it, why aren't they aren't on TV talking about it? There are people who don't agree with it. But think about this. If you've been saying that it's exactly the way it is for all these years, are you mm -hmm. really going to bring some guy on your show to debunk what you're saying? Exactly. Absolutely not. If you're really trying to push a, an advance, an agenda that is going to be global, you're not going to want people out there going to debunk what you're saying. And that's why he... Uh, the senator was trying to discredit her, saying, you're saying this is perhaps God-made rather than dependent upon something that is man-made and backed by science. And so that's the argument that they're using, as if nothing existed before man and science came along. You know, like God has never created anything. Right. And so, you know, I, when, I only, only took um, social sciences during college, and that luckily it wasn't socialist propaganda at my school. And I learned this is just... This is history. The, the Earth has purged itself at least seven times throughout the history of the Earth. It just happens. It gets very cold. It gets very hot. Um, and, and we are long overdue for this to happen again. And what we have now are globalists who are taking advantage of the fact that this is going to happen. And they're already pushing it because now the UN has announced they're organizing a civil society. Uh, it's basically being called a tsunami PR campaign. So they're going to be pumping all of this propaganda out there. And anyone else who has any voice um, that will counter this is obviously going to be made fun of. And they're going to be now told that they do not belong as a part of the civil society. Oh. And the Pope's already kind of getting in line because he's projecting images of panda bears and, and things like that on the Vatican. Yeah, so. of course, polar bears can't swim and all, <laughs> all this silliness. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Leanne. And get ready for that. Now, as we're talking about climate change and climate summit, we recently saw Obama out there saying that we know these terrorists are out here doing all these terrible things because of climate change, completely ridiculous. They're blowing up churches because you keep giving them grenades. They're killing people because you keep sending the CIA over there to fund them. But that's another story. Now let's talk about Obama no-fly list. It also should be the no-gun buy list, according to him. Obama's no-fly, no-buy violates the Second and Fifth Amendments. Yeah, because we, we always see these guys, they want to come out and ban everything, even though they're somewhat of a cause of the violence that's going on. Of course, Fast and Furious, giving guns to Al-Qaeda, all the stuff we talk about all the time. And Obama isn't the only person who is making these type of statements. Rahm Emanuel, the Chicago Don, as I would refer to him, made a similar statement many years ago. Because we need somebody in the Oval Office that moves this Congress. We had an election about change. People are clear about the special interests. They are tired of that gridlock the special interests cause in Washington. And I think the most simple thing we can do, and we've got to make this a number one issue as a test vote and then take it into the election. That is, if you are on the no-fly list because you are known as maybe a possible terrorist, you cannot buy a handgun in America. And Obama says, well, what's the possible justification for having somebody on a no-fly list buy a gun? And on the surface, I will agree with you that it sounds reasonable. But when you dig into it and you find out that many people on the no-fly list do not deserve to be there, it becomes a little more murky. Now, I'm sure there are some people who deserve to be on the no-fly list who have done things or suspects in various crimes. But one of the people who was completely innocent was Mr. Wade Hicks. And we actually had a chance to interview him when he was stranded in Hawaii. <laughs> Midway through his journey to see his wife, who's in the military in Japan, he was taken off the plane in Hawaii and told that he couldn't fly. So he was basically stranded in Hawaii. And he was stranded there from a Sunday to a Thursday uh, until that restriction was lifted. And uh, Wade is on his way home now. He finally was able to get back home. And he's on his way home. And he's a longtime listener. And he was kind enough to swing by Austin on his way home to Mississippi from California and uh, had him in the studio earlier with Alex Jones, and we've got him in the studio right now. Well, Wade, thank you for coming in and seeing us here at the station. Uh, you're on your way home, and uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to come by and uh, tell people more about your story. Um, you know, it's the sort of thing where a lot of people's instinct would just be to kind of hunker down and uh, try to keep a low profile and just hope that this goes away, but you kind of met it head on, and that's a good thing to do. Well, that's the thing. It if you're in that type of situation, you have to keep your head screwed on straight, don't get emotional, and just do whatever you know or what you think is the best thing to do. And for me, it was going to the media, going to my friends, because those were really the only people that were going to be able to help me. Uh, the government wasn't going to do anything to help me. They were just doing their whole bureaucratic uh, nightmare stuff. 
So I could have been there three months had I not been as proactive as I was trying to get this story out. That's right, and they still to this day have not given you any information as to why you were put on the list or what your current status is, whether you're no. on the list or whether you're off of the list. Right? No, they, they've never, I've asked for it in writing. They've never given me anything in writing to say that I was on the list. They never gave me anything that says I was off the list. And it completely throws everything we know about the Constitution and due process out the window. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very dangerous situation, not just for you, but for everybody. Because when the government can secretly accuse somebody of something, you, you still have no idea what they thought was wrong. And they won't tell you when they can secretly accuse you and then secretly impose penalties on you. Uh, they can do that to anybody. I mean, well, absolutely. And what's really scary is there's a lot of members of the military that their spouses do use um, military aircraft to fly space available when they're on deployment to go meet their loved ones that are deployed. Um, and that's what I was doing. I was going using a travel authorization from the military to go see my wife. And, you know, if I could be stopped mid flight, put on a no fly list, and detained in Hawaii, basically indefinitely until they decided to let me go, mm -hmm. this could happen to any military member's uh, spouse or, or children, even. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's extremely alarming that they're going after not only people that are outspoken like myself, but going after military spouses and military members directly basically saying, oh, well, you know, you're questionable, so you can't fly because we said so. And that's just one story, but we have many, many more, actually more than we have time to go through on our broadcast. But first, I want you to meet little Mikey. Now, this was New York Times article a few years ago. He was age eight, and they had him on a terror watch list. Now, to be fair, no eight-year-old is actually on the no-fly list. And you can see him right there in his Boy Scout uniform. But he had a similar name or birthday or you know place of birth, some type of identifying characteristic that made him pop up on the flag. And you would think that somebody would have the state of mind to realize that this eight-year-old Boy Scout is not a actual terrorist. But they didn't. They you know they kicked him off the flight, delayed the flight, whatever they did uh, to inconvenience this young man. And it makes me think as we continue to beef up these watch lists and these security lists when. Young Mikey becomes 16 and he wants to go get a job. Are they going to bar him from employment because he's on a watch list when he wants to join the military or uh, go buy a firearm or some other thing that requires identification? Are they going to say, no, you can't do that because you're on a terror watch list? And people say, well, of course, they'll be able to identify him later on that he's not an actual terrorist. But my <laughs> argument to that is if they would kick the boy off a plane, uh, equating him with, with some type of elusive international terrorist, I'm pretty sure they'd still consider him to be a terrorist when he becomes more of a fighting age young man. And Mikey isn't the only one. We also have TSA Toddler Terror. Now, this is a family that was marched off a plane because an 18-month-old was on a no-fly list. And the family said that they were humiliated, embarrassed, and picked on and said that they had to wait for the TSA to get around to servicing them. Another example of the mighty, mighty TSA. I'll, I'll say a real quick TSA story. I, I may have told this one before. I have countless ones every time we go on a trip I encounter another one but I think it was the last trip we went on uh, I got pulled over by the TSA they had to dig through my bag you know we carry camera equipment and they act like they've never seen a microphone before so they're pulling out they're digging through all my stuff and eventually what the guy comes down to he throws away my toothpaste and my eye drops you know because all terrorists walk around with toothpaste trying to blow people up uh, so that's uh, one of my more recent TSA stories but they don't just come after guys like me who have a bag full of wires and microphones are actually coming after airline pilots. The people who fly your plane, you guys recall, it was a few years ago, uh, the TSA would say, hey, we're gonna start checking all pilots before they get on the planes. And the pilot said, you trust us to fly a plane full of hundreds of people who we have their lives in our hands, but you don't trust us to get past your airport screens. They said, no, we're not going to fly your airplane. They said, okay, okay, okay. You guys can get by without going on the screening, but it's airline pilots, lawyers, and children on the terror watch list. And they say a commercial pilot can carry a gun in a cockpit, yet his name appeared on the terror watch list. Completely ridiculous. I, I just don't know what is going through the minds of these people who are supposedly vetting uh, the people who are on these terror watch lists. Now, luckily, they have implemented a new type of uh, counter argument, I guess you would say, to where if you do appear on the watch list, you can uh, send in some type of form or discrepancy and try to get your name off of it. But good luck on that altogether. And it was also came out in the news uh, is this week, last week, I think it was 72 DHS employees appeared on the terror watch list. So I wonder if Obama is going to ban those people from flying. I seriously doubt it, but one can only hope. 